try to avoid deliberating but other than that, you're just doing something that you don't want to create a scene. Okay. You're just being courteous, you're not violating the act. Um, also, I wanted to speak briefly about liability uh, of board members and of the board. Uh, one of the things that Flo and I uh, work hard to do is to try to keep the liability of this board as low as possible uh, for your own sake and for the board's sake and, and the taxpayer's sake. Uh, we, the district has asked for a couple of opinion letters asking about uh, risk management. And so if you don't know, essentially what happens is the state acts as the insurance company for this board in, in, to some degree. And so when you have, uh, when you have a, uh, a claim, we, the district would submit it to the state and they decide whether to, de to defend the claim or not. As board members, you are generally covered for things that happen in your uh, in the ordinary course of business as a board member. So if you're coming to these meetings, you're making comments, you're voting on things, you're typically covered by risk. Okay? Um, however, there may be circumstances where you are perceived to be acting on behalf of the board, but you're doing something somewhat separate, okay, where you're not part of the board. That can create a lot of liability for the board. Okay? So when, when you're not doing something that's directly related to this position as a board member, or you're not, or let's say that you are acting on something that's not specifically, you're not specifically requested to do on behalf of the board. So if the board asks you to go to legislative proceedings, uh, you know, that's, you're, you're typically covered. But if, if you're doing things on your own, outside of your position as a board member, but you're being perceived as a board member, that can create a lot of liability for this, this board. For you. So when you say um, legislate, would that also include interviews, you know, through the press or being quoted, you know, in publications? If you haven't been directed by the board to do that, then you're acting on your own and also creating a liability. Yeah, it, it can it can be interpreted as acting on your own. Now we would try to get coverage and, and everything that way, but you're starting to get into a realm where you may not have personal coverage. Um, when you're not acting directly at the request of the board. Um, the, what about acting yeah. on the request of the people that elected you? I mean, there was just, the law was just added because I think when the association went and testified to the legislature and kind of uh, drummed up on this, uh, that we're body corporate and we only act as that, then the, they, they added to the law saying that our ability to represent the people that elected us Cannot be um, is not can't be hampered by our membership on this board. Sure, you know you can you can certainly uh, act. Well, let me put it this way: your job as a board member is to become informed on the issues and make policy decisions in these board meetings. Now, outside of that, if you if you are engaging in advocacy outside of the outside of those policy making decisions, if you're engaged in advocacy, that's probably not considered your your role as a board member. Now you, you have a right to do so individually, but you need to know that you're putting both yourself and the board at a greater risk from an insurance from a cost and litigation standpoint. Um, does that answer your, your question? Why well, here the answer because like. well, no, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in light of this this addition to the law that said that that we're representing, you know, that we have the right to represent the people that elect us. Yeah, you do have the right to represent the people that elect you. But that may be but, but it may be separate you. from what what the board is doing. Well, you, know, you have a right on the board mm -hmm. to to make your vote. Right. To deliberate with your board members, to advocate within this board room as to what you believe the people who elected you have had you had elected you to do. Right. Okay. That's certainly within your, your role as a board member. But outside of this, you know, you are you know, if you if a board member is engaged in uh, in activities outside of their role as a deliberator and a policy decider here, then it it kind of goes beyond that 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 role. 
Yeah, but can't people just say, I'm not speaking for the board, I'm speaking and, for myself? And they, I mean, that's... And you can. And, and I think that's, that's I mean, important that to say it, that as much as you again, can, I mean, that's, not speaking on behalf of the board. I'm not board. speaking but on behalf of but I say I'm speaking on behalf of people that elect me. Like, right, so, so if I have an issue that the board just flat out isn't going to address, right. then I'll just go up to the legislature. I've done that and, and have had a law passed and, and plan on doing it this this session too, representing my community, saying, okay, if the board doesn't want to deal with it, I can get the legislature to deal with it. And I would testify, and I've done it, testify before a committee and say, I am here as an elected official representing the people that elected me. But I'm not speaking would, for the board. Yeah, Mr. Clare, maybe maybe this will help. So this is a body that acts as a body. Right. And you're an elected official, right? So if you're if you're acting as an elected official as opposed to acting as a body, you cannot go out to the public and represent that you're acting for this right. board. Right. That's right. the yeah. difference. Okay. 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 Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, say, well, that, you do say, I'm represent I'm not representing the community. Right. Right. Yeah, and so. You, I, I'm trying to just say, be really careful that things that are personal are not being perceived by others as on behalf of the board, because that can land, that can quickly land a board in an organization into you know, hot water. Um, and so, if if you are doing that, you know, you want to be really careful to, to make sure that that's clear to everyone. Right? Um, and you have you have you have five minutes. Four minutes. I think that's three. <laughs> three. three. <laughs> there's a letter that we're sending out. Uh, there's a letter that I, I don't know if we passed it around already. Or, I did. You know, passed it around. Yes. Okay. And so that covers this uh, a little bit more in depth uh, with all the legalese and the fun stuff. But that's the general idea. Be very careful about what you represent as, as board members. Are there any other questions I can answer on any of this? Can we I just add? Can I just yeah. add that yeah. these these letters describe individual liability versus body the the board's liability, and it's really important that each of you realize that if you are acting outside the scope of your board duties, you could be personally liable. So that's that's what I took from this um, first and foremost. But the second thing is whatever you do in the public when you're wearing or it's perceived that you're wearing a board member hat, just be very careful that you're you're not speaking ill of the school district and, and um, that you have a duty to this board and each of the other board members. What do you Does mean, that make you, sense? No, the, the, no if, you, that. you don't speak ill of the school. I have. If, if, well, if, if you, you, can, you, you have your opinion it. about the school, but if right. you're, you can't speak on behalf of the board. Right. 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 Okay. I've never done that. Right. right. So the idea is, if you're saying, you know, the Salt Lake School District is, you know, sacrificing lambs, you know, <laughs> it's not something that you know that you want to say, that, you know, I, that you're speaking personal and not on behalf it's of the like, board. That they, that the board yeah. is now, <laughs> is now letting everyone right. know that they are sacrificing, right. you know, animals or that something like that. That was supposed to be a secret, Brady. <laughs> that was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> yeah, I, I let it. And again, this is in the context of liability. Yes. So, right. Normally, acting within the scope of our duties, we can expect defense from risk management. Yeah. If we right. go outside of that, and someone sues us, we may be personally liable, and right. they will likely decline to defend us. So that's how I read it. Right. So they, they may they may defend initially under a reservation of rights, right. but then ultimately would be. I, I actually may have when is this question. Question. Has it ever happened? I don't know. Has it ever happened? Never. On this board? Or do you mean ever? In general. Oh, in general, general it has happened. Yeah. But on this board? Yeah. Not on this board. Well, you have a question. So it's on the third page of the first letter, um, number four. Um, where it talks about personal letters, blogs, emails, Facebook, the use of social media or other communications not authorized by the board would probably not meet the criteria, I guess, of what they're saying. Yeah. So to me that's kind of a murky area again because you know you could write a letter or you could have a blog and put whatever you wanted on it if you're representing yourself, correct? correct? And so how, how does this I'm, I'm a little confused as to how, why that would, you know, not, so it would have to, if the board doesn't authorize it, 
and you're saying it's a liability, but if a person, but if they do it anyway, they can do it representing themselves, or if they put, you know, Christy Sweat, board member, at the top of it, does is that the difference? It, it, it's, it is, and uh, so what we're concerned about is the perception that the board is is stating a view or taking a position that could create liability. And if someone is doing it personally on their own, you know, Facebook account or blog or whatever it may be, if they're, you know, they can do that personally and they bear the liability personally for it. Uh, unless they are authorized by the board to do something, then they're probably not covered. Yeah. I think you can. Yeah. Okay, does that? Yeah. Well, the, my only, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but the other thing is, for, I'm not doing things personally anyways, because I probably wouldn't be this involved if I wasn't elected on the board. And you see that, that, that quote that I'm saying, if they say here in the new law, or the attitude, notwithstanding a local school board's status as a body corporate, an elected member of a local school board serves and represents the residents of the local school board member's district, and that service and representation may not be restricted or impaired by the local school board member's membership on or obligation to the local school board. So I understood the intent of that was to, to let us, you know, the, to kind of break away from this mentality that the association was using to say that we can only act as a group and we had no authority whatsoever outside of this body. And the legislature said that's not their intent. If, what, what but I think what, but are about? you saying that we'd see yeah. the risk risk management yeah, would not be involved? Right. So Something this is like whether you're covered on an insurance policy. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, so you can still act and do what you're doing personally, but you may not be covered okay. on this insurance policy. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm just saying I'm not doing it personally anyways, I'm only doing it because I'm allowed. Well, what I'm saying is you could be liable personally right. for things that, that you do. Right. Like, you know, even though you're doing them for the public good, right. you could be liable personally. Whereas on things that are explicitly authorized by the board, generally you would be covered. And so if somebody were to sue the board and each of its members for something that you did, then not, you'd have no out-of-pocket right. expense, the attorneys would be hired, all of that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions or clarifications, additions? It did not change the fact that the board is empowered as a body corporate. That's, That's the only right. manner in which you can act. Yes. Right. It's, two, it's apples and oranges. Different things. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we will not need to go into.